Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Erla Rebello from CX UX department at SAP, and I will share this stage today with Stefan Schnabel from the SAP Design and SAP Accessibility Center and Inclusive Design. Together, we will present how to design your products for accessibility right from the start. Thank you for attending our session, and thank you for the TechEd 2021 organization for believing that our work contributes to the agenda of this event. Uh, we would like to start contextualizing our work, and as you can see, it's part of the intelligent enterprise. Smart preparation and implementation of accessibility to all, to all SAP applications is paramount to deliver inclusive products. Why customers care about this session? Customers will learn that SAP is committed to build accessible products and deliver inclusive experiences. How? Well, we focus on an assertive design process, which also promotes development efficiency. Our agenda uh, today will cover the design process that clarifies accountability and responsibilities of different roles, including design, and also describes some of the challenges faced by these roles. We will describe also what it takes to communicate interaction design to developers based on a three simple step process and something that we call a blueprint, a product blueprint for accessibility. Follow, we will have a live demo. That's the exciting part of this presentation, uh, showing how designers can actually use, uh, can annotate accessibility. And we finalize sharing some of the design supporting material, including trainings and guidelines. So as seen in the agenda, we start introducing the accessible design process. The expected result is to create a new strategy to empower designers to incorporate accessibility into design. Before I start, you should know that this presentation is the result of a successful collaboration internally at SAP. And our strategy is to empower designers to incorporate accessibility right at the design phase. Our vision of inclusive design that delivers, uh, deliver, is to deliver supporting tools and strategies to allow designers to confidently deliver inclusive products. So we start with this busy illustration, but that's important to understand the product development lifecycle. And what we have in here is a representation for a column that goes for product management, design, front-end development, and QA and testing. What we want to do here is contextualize the UX design work and highlight our accountability and responsibilities. Now, starting from planning and prevention, that's where we are, we are located. One key aspect to work accessibility smartly is to achieve development efficiency. How? Preventing development mistakes, defining common interaction patterns, and profiting from reusable components. However, all of these requires planning, collaboration, and alignment. Well, with all that being said, a designer is affected or influenced by a product management who decides the scope and priority. So a designer also affects the correct implementation that will be performed by front-end developers. That being said, the area a designer can control is to provide assertive deliverables for accessibility to be implemented. This is part of a cascade process that product management leads. He defines the flow of actions, and he is the one who defines the scope and priorities. All roles should discuss accessibility equally and together plan and work accessibility efficiently. They should be talking the same language. Accessibility is not a task for one unique role. It requires serious collaboration and alignment. Now, this slide shows the high demand versus the low resources we have and why we have to be smart about um, planning accessibility. So this illustration focuses on uh, how the low resource, which is related to plan, design, implement, and test product for accessibility, contrasts with the high demand of accessibility for all these roles to perform. So this makes all these roles face different challenges. For instance, the product owner is accountable for scope and prioritization. His challenge is to bring together all those roles to align. As a result, the, the, this team would understand where the product stands in terms of accessibility so that product owner can prioritize accessibility work and among other requests, it has to prioritize. Now, in terms of challenges for designers, 
without scope and priorities, it's hard for us to work accessibility. That leaves us with too much to, to annotate. So scope is important. Now the challenges faced by front-end developers are related to development efficiency. And for that, uh, use, the use of a strong and reliable UI technology library that offers accessibility properties out of the box is important because this library also provides the useful components that, that contributes to development efficiency. Now, the front-end developers also rely on a proper annotation to implement screen reading and focus order, and that comes from designers. And finally, the challenges from quali for quality assurance for testing. They are expected to test the product, and they use test manually and automated, uh, use automated tests. Now, the challenge on the manual is because it's demanding and tedious. And the challenge on the automate tests can be tricky because they require continuous integration to make that every release. Now, there is another challenge that is equal to all those roles, and that is education. Why is that important? Because collaboration alignment is only possible if all roles know what they are accountable and responsible for. So about education, and this is interesting, accessibility is not an easy topic. It is fulfilled with nuances, special conditions, assistive technologies, and so on. So the painful journey of a designer to master accessibility is based on these four stages of understanding and the growth of knowledge. What we designers found out is that accessibility is mostly explained from the UI development perspective. We wanted to simplify the training and knowledge acquisition, proposing an educational process targeted for designers. To master this scary monster of accessibility, SAP created educational kits for designers. This training strategy enables designers to climb the four stages of competence while growing understanding and improving skills. Now it is easy for designers to conquer that smiley face on this journey. Um, now, a great UX designer is capable of bringing all roles together to discuss accessibility. Now, while designers can be perceived as a catalyst to enable this joint effort, after all, we are in the middle of product management in front of developers. Clearly, any role can be a catalyst. But this quote is a provocation for designers to embrace the lead on this collaboration. At the end, accessibility still is a result of the joint effort to scope, define priorities, design, implement, test, and document. All roles are equally responsible for this collaboration. Now, communicate interaction design to developers. How that work? Well, uh, this is the core of our presentation, and we propose an annotation strategy for designers to inform how the design should be implemented for accessibility. The deliverable is a document we call Accessibility Product Blueprint, and we hand over that document to front-end developers. To create this blueprint, we suggest designers to go through these three simple steps process. The first one is to create inventories, two inventories, one inventory for pages, so explore your application and define a list of pages, and an inventory of components. Find out what are the list of common and reusable components on your application. That will contribute to the next three steps. So step two would be creating a document to describe component design for common and reusable UI elements. How do you do this? You get that one component inventory and you start annotating them for inner navigation, expected interaction, and screen reading. But if the UI technology uses it for front, by front-end developers, then this UI technology library uh, used by developers, it has offers out-of-the-box accessibility support for those UI elements. You don't have to worry about this step. Just educate yourself about the UI components, like capabilities to deliver the expected experience when the user is interacting with such components across different pages on your product. The step three is one that we cannot leave without. It's annotating pages. So from the inventory of pages, we have to focus on annotating the page for the sequence of screen reading and focused order. This enables users to navigate and interact within a page using assistive technologies. It will also be used to annotate the order of navigation of all the elements on the screen. And one thing that I should actually bring in here is that screen reading and focus order are two of the most important aspects of accessibility. It's also the most puzzling requirement for designers and UI developers to align. Hopefully, this annotation kit will help everybody. This is the exciting part. Now, I'm happy to announce that SAP empowers accessibility and support, supports designers. 
and the inclusive de design department from SAP Design should be credited for coordinating an incredible collaboration across design departments. I'm proud to have had the opportunity to represent CX UX Design. The result of this collaboration is the development of two exclusive extended capabilities on Figma that helps designers to annotate their work. This is convenient because Figma has been just recently adopted as an official um, tool for designers to work. The first Figma extended capability is the library of UI elements or assets to annotate screens. These elements are based on SAP corporate standards. And this library contains visual elements that informs the order of screen reading, sequence to focus order, skipping groups, landmarks, definition, tooltips, alternative text, and so on. The second Figma extended capability is a plugin uh, to annotate screen reading and focus order, created also exclusively uh, by and for SAP designers. And that, that's, um, that, that's, that brings more efficiency to work with uh, annotation for screen reading and focus order. Let's talk about this uh, two, two, two elements on Figma. So the assets library for design annotation is available to be used across SAP projects under the name of SAP Accessibility Assets. And once enabled, the designer will have access to four groups of elements to, for, uh, for annotation. First one, keyboard, that uh, helps the user to manually inform the sequence of the keyboard navigation, also adding shortcuts and skipping groups. Uh, screen reading, uh, screen reader that informs the sequence of content to be announced on the screen. A complementary like tooltips, time limits, and external content, and some component designs that uh, enables a drop downs, pop over tables to be annotated. An annotate screen would look like this. It's busy, but it uh, shows everything that's important for developers to take in consideration while developing a screen. Figma plugin, and uh, finally, the Figma plugin is also uh, can be searched under SAP plugins, and it's named SAP Accessibility Assets. The plugin facilitates the task to order elements uh, for screen reading and focus order, and how. The numbering of elements is auto created at this time. So after you select e each UI element, that numbering happens happens automatically. Now it's demo time, and I invite you to join Stefan, uh, who will present the library and some of the main assets, what they represent, and how to use them. He will also show the SAP created plugin. So enjoy. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to access this library. You go to the SAP Organization Overview, type in the search field SAP ACC, and already the first hit will bring you right there. By activation, you start right in the library. I'm going to explain you now in detail. The library consists of several annotations. In the legend, Orange stands for keyboard assets, violet for screen related assets, and other colors for additional assets. Also, we have hints for mobile use. We have assets for focus order display, focus position, shortcut display, skip sequences. This is especially useful if you want to skip between blocks of information. We have assets for screen reader annotations, um, the reading order in which these things were read, the heading, hierarchies, landmarks, that is uh, for orientation on a page, invisible labels, invisible descriptions, invisible messages, and app titles. Also, we have a complementary section for tooltips, time limit indication, and embedded external content. We also have assets for component design, for instance, which keys are used to activate functions in certain components or give uh, direction cues here for the direction of the navigation within components. And we have also screen reader related components here for the role, role properties, role scope and relations. We have also other stuff here, for instance, for uh, announcing which component you use here. Uh, there are symbols for refresh, activation, 
and mouse interactions are uh, yeah, a large number of uh, available components with touch interaction even for left and right hand. Here's an example how to apply these annotations. For instance, you want to apply landmarks for a given design. You simply pull them from the Assets panel and put them around the region you want to assign a landmark to. You repeat the process for other landmarks. In case you don't know which landmark is applicable for a certain region, you can open the link for the information that is conveniently linked from each of these annotations and can get information from the respective location in the SAP Accessibility Wiki, where all the landmark variants are described. We choose banner as appropriate for the particular type of region here we apply and therefore we choose the variant banner and put it around the respective area as before. We repeat the process now for the inner regions. For instance, there's a large region around product details. So we go on and again into the asset panel, pull out the respective annotation, change its role to region and put it around this very component container. We repeat this process now for the other component containers. And as you see here, we have three regions now that need to be distinguishable from each other. In the screen reader, you have to put labels here with the name of the regions. There's a special annotation for that available too. In the second part of the demo, we are going to apply a tab chain information to a certain application page. Again, you are going to pull out the different assets from the assets panel and you can individually numbering by replacing the N to the tab index number you want to apply in the sequence. This task is highly repetitive and therefore quite tedious. There's a better way to accomplish this. You can use a sub accessibility asset plugin denoted for that purpose. Focus order will let you select the individual layers and adding them to a list of positions that will represent your very tab chain all over the respective page. You repeat the process until you have covered every tab stop. To indicate branches of error-based navigation, you select items in the list. When done, you click on Create and the list of positions is generated automatically for you. This list can be also retrieved from the overview of all available layers in the layers list on the left side here. We are switching to that now. And you find it on top of them as an editable focus order instant. You can easily manipulate the individual nodes afterwards if it's necessary. Let's have a look at the examples page of the SAP Accessibility Assets. There are examples for the aforementioned landmarks here with uh, labels attached to that. Um, with all the real life examples, by the way, we have examples for the heading annotations here with the individual levels applied to regions with titles. We have focus order examples, skip sequence examples to skip between the different regions here. Um, on the right side, Examples for reading swipe order, which is very convenient in mobile applications to read with screen readers. Uh, it's sequentially information which belongs together. Shortcut information here also uh, applied to buttons. Examples for app titles, tooltips, and last but not least, 
examples for invisible labels applied to text fields. And here we see, for instance, that we have several parts here uh, of that label combinations here. Invisible descriptions applied to images, the famous alt text, so to say. And example for invisible messages for self-announcing regions as a result of a user operation. Let me finish this demo showing you some actual specification work. Implicit selection of input recommendation is a format of an interaction journey where we have uh, next to the roles applied for this particular uh, workflow here. Uh, info text that should be spoken on focus by the screen reader using the annotations for that purpose here. Here we have a refresh of a particular region when the focus is and you start typing in uh, along with the role model of the popover showing here and uh, you go down here using the arrow key and uh, you get messages that should be spoken doing so by the screen reader. Uh, again, with the uh, visualization of the update of the input field, when you arrow through the individual recommended values or you uh, click with the mouse or select with space here with uh, that annotations usage here and some final hints what how to do to leave the field. So I hope you have enjoyed the demo. Now a few more slides to present uh, the design supporting materials SAP has to offer for designers. Um, I have the privilege to lead a group of accessibility advocates, the CX UX Design Accessibility Group. And this group created several kits to enable designers to work accessibility, and these are some of them. A list of six design criteria for accessibility, and that's the basic start point for those starting in this topic. The team also created a self-paced training based on videos that have been created by SAP Accessibility Group. We compiled those videos in seven sessions of one hour or less, which makes it easy for a self-paced training. SAP has 31 well-defined accessibility corporate standards. They are mostly focused on implementation. We created a booklet, extracting the sense of what it means for designers, for each one of those 31 standards. That becomes easier for us to contextualize ourselves around those 31 requirements, standards. The persona lenses is a fun and practical way to add accessibility requirements to existing business persona. The lenses cover six groups of accessibility needs, vision, hearing, cognition, expert user, mother and working conditions, and does not require you to add extra uh, personas to cover accessibility. Takeaways, the key takeaways uh, from our presentation is accessibility is intimidating, yes, but with knowledge and proper tools, it is fun. That's what we are delivering, a uh, way to educate ourselves, designers. Every designer has an important role to deliver accessibility, but that requires alignment, collaboration, and sharing. SAP has invested time and effort to create tools to support designers, so we do encourage you to make use of them if you're a designer. And SAP is committed to deliver customer-centric solutions that are inclusive and accessible to fulfill customers' needs. And these are some of the learnings material offered by SAP TechEd to accelerate your career. So we reached the end of our presentation. Thank you for your interest and participation. If you have any questions, you have our contact information from me and Stefan. So we do hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the TechEd. Thank you. Thank you.